So they go on a beautiful romantic walk with each other and they go up a lighthouse and it's all romance. It is. And, and they start making out. Well, um, no, no, it's not all romance. <laughs> they <laughs> fall more slapstick. R- Richard gets uh, the, the, <laughs> you're lighthouse, right, you're right. the lighthouse light beams, beams him in the eyes. eyes and he falls down like six flights of stairs. <laughs> this movie is so ridiculous. <laughs> so he falls down the flight of stairs. They, 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 they're obviously in love with each other because that's also every 80s movie. It takes one day to fall in no love. No idea why she likes him. They're making out on the beach. It's perfect. And then I have to tell you, <laughs> as, as much as I make fun of this movie and as much as I like genuinely <laughs> think Bernie it's crap, there are some moments where I'm like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. They're making out on the beach and the and the water is just <laughs> softly moving and bernie Moonlight, bernie yeah. just floats up onto the beach from the water face forward face looking forward at them. looking at them and it's just it's perfect <laughs> welcome to buzz in the tower a podcast dedicated to the movies of the 1980s Prepare to be stuffed in our delorean and taken on a trip through the best decade of film ever hey mo we better back up we don't have enough road to get up to 88 Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. So if you love Caddyshack, The Goonies, Aliens, Weird Science, Spies Like Us, The Great Outdoors, Empire Strikes Back, The Great Muppet Caper, Pretty in Pink, Predator, Rocky IV, Roadhouse, Say Anything, Real Genius, Short Circuit, Some Kind of Wonderful, Beverly Hills Cop, Akira, Tango and Cash, The Breakfast Club, and They Live, just to name a few, then sit back, relax, and get ready to be entertained. Because we came here to chew bubblegum and podcast about 80s movies, and we're all out of bubblegum. If you haven't already, subscribe to Buzz in the Tower on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever your favorite podcast platform is. And while you're there, leave a review and a five-star rating. It's a moral imperative! You can also find us on TikTok, Instagram, and all social media platforms by searching the tag at Buzz in the Tower. That's B-U-Z-Z-N, The Tower. Also, check out our website, buzzinthetower.com, and grab some officially licensed gear. It's so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking some up. Now, if you want to get nuts, let's get nuts. Head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash buzzinthetower. With memberships as low as $3 a month, you can have access to tons of extra content, and a portion of all proceeds go directly to Save Ferris. Dark darling, dark Buzz in the Towers brought to you by Sonic Loans. You can find them at sonicloans.com. Max, today we tackle the 800-pound gorilla in the room. We talk about the greatest film ever made, Weekend at Bernie's. Yes! If you want to have that beach house like <laughs> like Bernie Lomax, yeah. you better get the right loan. And if you need the right loan, you know where to go. Don't go to the mob. Don't go to the mob <laughs> for your loan. You go to Sonic Loans. Talk to Charlie, his wife, the team over at Sonic Loans. They're going to get you into the best rate fixed, adjustable, 15-year, 30-year. I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that you get the right group to work with when you're getting a mortgage. Getting into the wrong mortgage can put you in a real tough situation. Whereas if you get into the right mortgage, you're going to have boats, you're going to have golf carts, you're going to have champagne in the cooler. Yeah. Yeah. All that good stuff. Excellent. Reach out to Sonic Loans. Let them know that Buzz in the Tower sent you and they will take care of you start to finish and get you into the right loan. NMLS number 1955855. Not available in all states. Not a commitment to lend. Additional requirements apply. Visit sonicloans.com or call 313-488-4888 for more information. Buzz in the Tower is also brought to you by Bolton Legal Group. You can find them at boltonlegalgroup.com and for a free consultation, call 248-595-0001. When you pretend that your boss is alive, when he's actually dead, so that you can party at his house over the weekend... You need an attorney, the best (laughs) attorney you can find. Ian is there with his team, aggressive, efficient. They are going to make sure that no matter how much guilt is on you, if you're wearing the Rolex of your dead (laughs) boss and the police find you, they are going to take care of you. It's important to make sure that this is a terrible, terrible movie on the legal side. On the next episode, we should have Ian call in and explain what he would do if they called him. He would immediately cut you loose as as your attorney. He'd be like, I can't help you, no. But for everything else he can, whether it's real estate law, whether it's business this law make sure to reach out to Ian and his team tell them that buzz in the tower sent you and they'll take care of you and make sure that your case is well represented today's episode weekend at bernie's with great power comes great responsibility 
Hosting a podcast dedicated to the best decade of film ever is not something we take lightly. The Goonies, Empire Strikes Back, Breakfast Club, the list of classics goes on forever. Carpenter, Spielberg, Hughes, Lucas, the 80s had it all. So for this reason, it is our duty, nay, our privilege, to talk about one of the greatest films ever made any decade for the rest of our lives. Today on Buzz in the Tower, we'll deep dive into Weekend at Bernie's. I'm Mo Shapiro, and joining me as always, the Larry to my Richard, Max Sanders. And with that, Max, Max, oh, he moved his arm, he's alive. (laughs) The greatest movie ever, I'm so excited. I give it an 8.3. This is like your birthday. It's so much fun. Does this count as your birthday gift? Sure, I'll take it. (laughs) Can we, I mean... (laughs) If we go into the 90s, I'm Something gonna... like it hot. <laughs> Bernie's 2. We oh, can do Jesus, can we not talk about Bernie's 2? <laughs> Voodoo instead. I don't want to talk about Bernie's 2. I'm good. Thank you. This is the movie that ended the 80s. This was 89, and like you couldn't get more 80s, so they moved into the 90s. Well, I would like to make a, a point of parliamentary order. The movie that ended the 80s was Tango and Cash. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's, just... the, that's the action version of Weekend at Bernie's. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. right? Not in so two much guys the story, in a but no, yeah, two, guys. two guys in a situation. <laughs> By the way, that is the best name of a podcast ever. Two guys, Two guys in, in a situation. situation. It could be anything. That's, this is brilliant. Yeah. You just stumbled into a, if we're doing another podcast, Two Guys in a Situation. I like it a lot. That's great. Yeah. Oh, that's, when you know we could get the guy from Jersey Shore, the situation, but then it he's doesn't, in, then it doesn't sound like a podcast. It sounds more like a, a adult film. Yeah. But he's Two in, Guys in a Situation. He's in jail. Did you miss my joke? Yeah, I got it. Do you know that somebody, somebody got the, uh, you made a joke about transitions. Yeah. You, know, you blew a tranny. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Somebody. Yeah, that was, it was great. <laughs> Hi, Max. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome to the show. If it's your first time listening to us, then please know it's not getting any better than this. This is the this is the this is the height before the fall. This is Rome before it burnt. So we're trash pandas. So this is like someone threw out their fillets. This is a rotted maggot filled fillet that yeah. we're feasting on right now. Delicious. Oh, it's, it's a so 96er good. that candy couldn't finish. The old 96er. It all comes around. You throw and there was raccoons in that movie. If I get him, if I get Max to talk about Weekend at Bernie's, will you throw in some hats for the kids <laughs> in the dessert? <laughs> Max, if it is your first time listening to the show, it's not your first time. You listen to it all the time. But for everybody else, please make sure that you head on over to Spotify, Apple Podcast, whatever podcast platform you're on. Click that little subscribe or follow button. Leave us a review. We need it. It's how we get through our day. Additionally, check out all of our social media channels. There's a little different flavor on each one, especially TikTok. We got some great stuff on there at Buzz in the Tower or go to our website, buzzinthetower.com, where you can pick up officially licensed merch and become a part of the team. If you really want to become a part of the team, if you really want to be a co-pilot and understand what goes through our heads when we pick topics like Weekend at Bernie's, then you need to become a Patreon. Yeah. Go to patreon.com slash buzz in the tower. You can start off at Goose, Iceman, or Maverick. Very low entry fee, three dollars a month to five dollars a yeah, month. If you pay for the year, it's like twenty eight bucks. It's nothing. It's yeah. it's it's small change for it's someone. A pair of underwear for someone who's going to their boss's house yeah. Labor Day weekend for the Hamptons. Yeah. Small dollars, man. Yeah. Small dollars. <laughs> Am I forgetting anything? Is there anything else that I want to say? You want to say? Uh, voluptuous cannibal also likes carrot cake. There you go. Glad we brought that up. <laughs> She's one of our fans. She is one of our fans. She's you, fantastic. You said carrot cake was your favorite. It is my favorite. You got to learn my favorite from the from being a Patreon. <laughs> I've yet to divulge. It's weird. We didn't get anybody pouring as a Patreon after we threw that out there. So that's really odd. What kind of cake he does like? I don't know, Max. <laughs> so we decided last week we did an episode about our favorite cars, vehicles yep. in eighties movies, and you picked the easy the, go marathon Porsche replica uh, go kart. As a result of that, started talking about everything weekend at Bernie's, and I made the the stupid comment. I said, "Can we do an episode on weekend at Bernie's?" And you lit up like a Christmas. I was going to suggest it to you, but I thought you'd stomp me down. No, because, yeah. and then we were talking about our topic for this week, and I'm, and I'm actually kind of glad because for those of you that don't know, it is Sunday afternoon Eastern Standard Time, roughly about five o'clock, and I spent my day at the Lions Eagles game that <laughs> they yeah they oh my Lions yeah so I need I need weekend at Bernie's to get me past how I feel how about did Campbell that game. look uh he is you know I have a Campbell bobblehead I saw it's it's awesome does, it's going to my does it do it's going push-ups and beat up people no it bites kneecaps it's really really great <laughs> doesn't matter if there's three toes the, and the, one the, hard, the, the hardest thing about being a Lions fan is that this year more than any other year I actually do feel like we just have to be patient because next year's the year. But I've been saying next year's the year. I'm 43 years old for 42 years. I came out of my mom saying next year's the year. (laughs) It's like the unbelievable Lions fandom. The last time you made the NFC championship game was 1992. I'm aware. Yeah. Yeah. That's 30 years. Max, the Lions have not won a playoff game 
since then, and they've only won one in the history of the franchise. They've won world championships prior to the actual current day NFL. So you need to write a movie that deals with the Lions. I, I already know. So, so when we when we did you our episode, to. when we did our episode on this is major, like major league. league, yeah, this is major. And league. we learned about how the writer of Major League was basically just a huge Cleveland fan who wrote this like fantasy about yeah, what it would CD be Lord, like. I think so. You know Key and Peele, right? Oh my God, I love Key and Peele. So Keegan Michael Key, he is from Michigan and a huge Lions fan. I've seen him on the sideline at games before. So I yeah. feel like if I wrote the script for this and I could get it to him, he'd be like, absolutely, because anyone who grew up in Michigan. They know this unique special pain that I'm going through right now. And Get it's Axel Foley in, too. They're doing oh Beverly Hills Cops 4 right I know, now. I know. Judd Reinhold looks rough. Uh, he does. But I'm glad but they're both in it. But they're both going to be in it. I'm yeah. just happy they're both in it. So, yeah. All right, Max. That all being said, Weekend at Bernie's is the one thing I was looking forward to <laughs> this weekend. This weekend. I think we should I th- I preface this by saying this is one of those movies that on paper makes no sense. Watching it makes no sense. <laughs> but like you and I are, are, are we just giggle like schoolgirls every time we talk about this. There's only two things in the world that really make me nonsensic, nonsensically, is that a word? Yeah. Laugh and giggle. A and little, it's a this. Shoe? It, no, that doesn't make me giggle. I wouldn't call <laughs> it, it a giggle. That makes me, it makes me sweat. Um, <laughs> it's this movie. And then when we talk about Philip Bombay from Back to School. I'm outraged. I'm satisfied. I'm <laughs> outraged. Oh, Philip. You brought this to my attention earlier that every time I imitate, I say, oh, Philip, I'm <laughs> saying I'm saying it with his accent. So it's like it should be someone else saying it's, it's his it's, accent is the most fun to make fun of. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He's just so upright. Mis- but- Mr. Mellon. <laughs> he's he's just so pomp and yeah, yeah, I love it. But this movie. So it has everything. I thought about this, actually. What kind of movie is it? Yes, it's outrageous. And yes, it's bad as a, like a structural plot. Like you wouldn't show us to people writing scripts. Elevator like, pitch me on Weekend at Bernie's. Elevator pitch you? Uh, <laughs> someone, God. <laughs> so someone's boss, someone's boss died, and you're trying. No, I don't want to. You're giving me a plot synopsis. I want two sentences. I want you. You're okay. in the elevator w- w- at MGM, and you are gonna right now. Elevator pitch me. What do you even say to sell me on this smoking, steaming pile of crap? Eighties excess, Charlie Chaplin level eighties. Glorification of comedy. I, that, you, you're, you, thank God you don't elevator pitch. No, I would simply say, <laughs> what? I can't even say, Philip. <laughs> Philip, I'm outraged. <laughs> Two guys, a scamp of a con man and a hard worker, yeah. find their boss dead. But to keep the party going, keep it alive. Okay, that's really good. <laughs> that's it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's absurd. But it's so much more than that. It's a summer movie. I didn't realize it takes place over Labor Day. Oh, yeah. So it just happened, basically. It's Absolutely. the right time of year for it. It is the perfect time of year. It's a being screwed by your boss movie, which we can all relate to. You know what I mean? Like the terrible boss who's also pinning them for the you know scandal that he's doing. Is it a little bit of romance? And he's murdering that. He wants to murder them. Yeah. It's being awkward with a girl you like kind of movie sure. and not fully getting it. Yeah. It's a buddy comedy. It is a great buddy comedy. It's physical comedy and it's the very cool excess of the 80s too. Max, according to IMDb, it's about two young men <laughs> who are trying to make their way in a corporation. <laughs> One using their charm, the other using hard work. When they go to the, <laughs> when they go to the president, Bernie Lomax, with a serious financial error on a printout, he pretends to be thrilled and invites them to his beach house for the weekend in the Hamptons. He actually plans on having them killed. Bernie is also fooling around with the girlfriend of his mafia partner. Very stupidly. Very stupidly. And when the partner has Bernie killed, the boys end up having to pretend that Bernie is still alive as the frustrated hitman who killed Bernie tries time and time again to complete the job. <laughs> <laughs> Some like it hot. The fact that, oh, like, yeah. that Bernie like does alive things while he's dead. Has any movie even tried this in the 80s, 90s, or 2000s? I, before, we, before we go into what I assume is going to be just an insane <laughs> amount of crazy facts and information that you found one way or another. I went deep movie. diving. I don't I, think I, I've ever I'm worked, not surprised. I don't, I don't think I've ever worked harder in my entire I, life. You're like, <laughs> I, I put seven days into this movie. No, like seven hours. That's great. Yeah. Let's talk about who wrote it, who directed it, and who starred in it. Yep. So let's start right at the top. It was directed by Ted Kotcheff. Yep. <laughs> Tell me about Ted Kotcheff, Max. I didn't know this. He produced 264 episodes of Law & Order SVU. Sure. Dun, dun. Right, is that the noise? Dun, 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 yeah, dun, yeah. dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So, I mean, like, he knows how to captivate an audience. Uh, he directed First Blood. So. Madness. Yeah. <laughs> Let, I just, I just want to take... I was waiting for you to get to that. I just want to... I want to pause for a second. Yep. First Blood... 
Real movie. You, and for those out there who have never seen any of the Rambo movies, you have to understand First Blood. It's by itself. Is it, so unique. It's not. It, it really feels almost not, like it's not part of the series. Really, it's not really. And also on top of the fact that it's a real movie, the perspective how it was shot was so unique. You know, showing it as this guy being chased around. Yeah, you barely see him. Right. That started the whole action movie thing. Like, you show the hero very little, and it's more like kind of the aura of him, the yeah. John Wick. And then it's yeah. building up. Yeah. Yeah. That guy directed First Blood and then said, hold my beer, <laughs> and went to Weekend at Bernie's. So he had some other epic movies, Fun with Dick and Jane in the 70s, North Dallas 40, Uncommon Valor, uh, Split Image, which I've never heard of, Winter People, and Switching Channels. Yeah. So and Weekend at Bernie's, and he's also you know he stars in this movie. In Weekend at Bernie's, he's uh he's Richard's dad. No way, he is the guy in his underwear yeah. scratching his stomach. Isn't I had no idea. Isn't that's that incredible? Best cameo ever. Yeah, right. I'm already impressed with the little <laughs> things that you found. That makes me so happy. He's so annoyed too. He's a great dad. Yeah. Let's talk about who wrote this movie. Oh, Robert Klein. Is it? Did you I think say? it's I think it's Klein. Klein. I think it's Klein. McLean. <laughs> Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> so he wrote 10 episodes of Tracy Takes On, which was a really funny show where the Simpsons. Were. I loved yeah, I was yeah. Saying, I love Tracy Takes On. You know what else he wrote, right? Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. Freaking National Lampoon's <laughs> European Vacation. There it is. Na- I mean, that's. Uh, I want to meet this guy. He also wrote Weekend at Bernie's too. So let's just take a deep <laughs> okay. breath on that. Yeah. When you think of the 80s and what was going on, you had a lot of people with a lot of talent who were doing different projects. European Vacation, highly underrated. A lot of people think it's a stinker. I think it's quite funny. I loved it. But I also signed me up for Clark and, yeah, and, yeah. and Alan, you know? <laughs> so them in the little uh, hostel is always funny with the bathtubs. Oh, it's the best. Yeah, the it's best. very Weekend at Bernie's. It is. A, it's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's very. But the cast is kind of loaded, too. So you got Andrew McCarthy, who we freaking love. And he's well, not... well, let's let's slow down. You. You don't like him? No, no. I like Andrew McCarthy. McCarthy, you pray at his altar because of one movie, which I know we mentioned last week. You're too. I I think I said this last week. I want to make sure I say it the right way. If somebody called me and said, and you were single, which you're not, obviously, but you were single and said, I want to date your friend Max. Tell me who he is in a nutshell. I'd be like, no, no, baby. This is me in a nutshell. I'm sorry. (laughs) Just kidding. A little Austin Powers for you. Yeah, I love Austin. I would say that the best way to tell people who you are is to tell them what your two favorite movies are from the eighties and it's mannequin and weekend at Bernie's. Yep. So you, you, you would put those on the pedestal above everything else. Yep. Pretty much. That's amazing to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Andrew McCarthy. I'm just going to go to the high hits, but I mean, St. Elmo's fire, pretty, in pretty in pink, uh, mannequin. I can't believe I have to say mannequin <laughs> in that list, but that's okay. Weekend at Bernie's. Um, he was in some episodes of tales from the crypt. He was of course, less than we, zero, we, man. I'm, I'm getting there. I skipped it. Sorry. Yeah. Less than yeah. Zero. <laughs> yeah I'm getting there. No, I skipped we, it. We at Bernie's too. I can't forget that. Yeah. I mean, and then Andrew McCarthy, heartthrob of the eighties. Great for sure. head of hair. Yeah. I, think, I think Boy Meets World wouldn't exist without Andrew McCarthy. Oh, yeah, like that. that's interesting. That middle part hair. Now let's move over to Jonathan Silverman. Underrated actor. Well, well, you know, he was in. He had small roles in little things. He had, Caddyshack his, too. Caddyshack too was not a small role. He was the lead in Caddyshack. <laughs> crappy Shack too. It is kind of odd that his career didn't take off more than it did. So he got market corrected by the guy who played the Hebrew Hammer and the Jew in uh, Saving Private Ryan. Oh, he got stabbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, he like yeah. took the mantle of like the nervous, neurotic, tall, semi good looking. Well, Jew. no, and you know who the other guy is that was more, I guess, like Jeff more, Goldblum. No, Goldblum is the OG. Yeah. Um, remember the guy in Dazed and Confused? That's really who I think kind of took his market share. Yeah, uh, yeah. His name is Adam Goldberg. The actress, I mean, I don't <laughs> nice. right, they're all Jewish names, but he played Mike, the guy who got like pissed off in the park and yeah. like, or with their bonfire and like fought the other guy. But he was like this neurotic, thin, dark haired Jewish kid. Yeah, yeah. Jason Silverman. I mean, he's a fun. Jonathan Zin- Silverman. Jonathan Silverman. He's a fun Zanoons. Yeah, he is. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> like give you a little bit yeah. of they have great, Caddyshack too. They have great chemistry. Great chemistry. Though. Straight man and like I, I let me tell you something. All the things that they're bringing back. Yeah. If they did a weekend at Bernie's three today with both of them, I'm in. Yeah. It'd be absolutely hilarious to me. This plot is you could do this in any decade. It doesn't matter. Outside of weekend at Bernie's two, weekend at Bernie's one, and what are we missing? What else was girls just want to have fun? Girls just want to have fun. He's really creepy. <laughs> Let me tune into Tokyo. Oh, that's right. <laughs> God, yeah. that oh, doesn't Jesus. age well. Yep, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> the things they got away with. Gwen Saunders, the love interest, is played by Catherine Mary Stewart, who you, of course, would remember her from being the female love interest in The Last Starfighter. Yeah. And our boy over at Retro Life for You did an interview with her. So cool. So cool. And she's stunning in this movie, but she's like obtainable stunning. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah. like, okay, I get it. She's in college. Sure. Yeah. And then I don't need to talk about anybody else other than we got to talk about Bernie Lomax. So so what makes Bernie so perfect is Terry Kisser is fantastic in this role, but he's never in anything else. So I don't know him iconically as anything else. He's just he's Bernie to me forever. Dude, he was in Manimal. 
<laughs> yeah. Different strokes. He was a burglar. <laughs> what did he have, did I don't know. He was in some episode as a burglar. He was in Chips. I mean, he's a classically trained TV actor. I mean, he had tons of different like TV show things. All time mustache too. Oh, great mustache. I will tell you, he really for me makes the movie. When you when you look at the physical comedy of this, where, where we, did we have an episode like ten episodes ago where you made a reference to him being a modern day Char- Charlie Joe Chaplin? Chaplin. Which really is such an you. outrageous statement, but there's a li- there's a hint, when a they, smidgen of truth. To when they kill him the first time and he has that goofy smile on his face like, and, then he, and then it goes down, yeah. you're ready for the rest of the movie. You're yeah. like, this guy can do anything. It is actually, <laughs> if you really think about what he's doing and he has to stay totally still yep. and he can't like, if you see him breathe. Did and, you watch this whole time and see like, does he look alive yes. at all? And he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. It's really impressive how still he stands. And even when he's on the boat, yeah. we're, we're jumping ahead a little bit, but <laughs> I don't think we need to talk about anybody else. Let's get into, let's go facts and then let's just walk through this glorious movie yeah let's do it <laughs> what do you got max give me everything you have i want it okay. all came out july 5th 1989 made 30.2 million i thought it'd be more for as iconic as it is uh cost 15 million a tight hour 37 which we like we like a lot yeah and i guess andrew mccarthy was offered richard but he loved larry and this is a departure for him he's usually the nice aw shucks guy in movies he's kind of the straight man right him is kind of the slimy connie kind of guy he's yeah, really yeah. good at it he was great i, I he feel was like great. he could have done more like that yeah. you know yeah, i mean yeah. like and i love his like i love his wardrobe too that he's wearing the like the converses with like the weird leg warmer socks i don't know why he's wearing those in the middle of summer but his chemistry with jonathan silverman is just fantastic they're, they're great they're just so funny you there. you buy that they're you buy the the, the odd couple right yep. like do, 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 do. So this is gonna blow your mind oh so this is your first mind blower yes you know we should have a mind no max is <laughs> mind blowers <laughs> so before they were considered for the main lead roles uh this was pitched as a Corey's movie oh my god Heyman feldman yes <laughs> it would have been, been really so good, good. <laughs> really good but they decided they were too young oh man they, that they, been really they good. could have been college interns oh. this was 89 this was dream a little dream them oh man this would have revitalized their career this would have this could have saved Corey Haim. something really really special yeah i mean we said before bernie's house was built uh, for the movie at the south end of the Fort Fisher Natural Recreation Area in North Carolina, but it was destroyed at the end of the movie. How do they do that? This should be like, I would want to live there. Well, you have to remember, interior shots may not have been in the house. So you get the exterior of the yep. house built, and they may not have used all of them. And plus, if you're just building a house out for those rooms, you don't need functional plumbing. You don't need like electrical. It, g- give me this. Give me it. I just, know. Yeah, I'm, I I'm, like, I'm like killing it for you. I'm sorry. Continue. Continue. <laughs> this was inspired by a very low budget 1983 Hindi movie called John B. He John B. Do Yaro from made in 1983. Sure, I remember that great <laughs> film. So, I guess during filming, uh, Andrew McCarthy played a ton of board games, and all the mom- Monopoly stuff when he's playing with Bernie is improvised. The title's perfect. I don't think you'd want anything else. Like, I think that's what kind of stands the test of time. Originally, it was called Hot and Cold. They pitched Heat Wave and Some Like It Hot. I think we get a Bernie's is the what best. One of the things I loved when we were looking at facts on this movie is that it's a garbage movie. So there isn't like a ton, but the ones that exist are great. And one of the, I thought one of the funniest things, have you seen that Friends episode that they were referencing? I Rachel's favorite knows. movie. Rachel's favorite movie when they were playing, you know, trivia about Friends yeah. is Weekend at Bernie's. Yeah. So they have Always Sunny in Philadelphia called back this movie, American Dad, The Simpsons, Family Guy. How Rick, I Met Your Mother. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Rick and Morty. Remember Weekend at Dead Cat Ladies? Absolutely. <laughs> What, interdimensional cable? Yeah. I totally remember. Beavis and Butthead's called it out too. But I guess the title is a lie. Isn't that weird? Why is the title a lie? It says Weekend at Bernie's. So they got into Bernie's house at 6.30 p.m. on Friday. The movie ends late Saturday afternoon. They didn't spend a whole weekend there. Yeah, but technically Larry did because he stayed. Remember? They all left. It's not a he... Bernie, but he's staying with uh, no, Gwen. No, 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 no. Richard is staying with Gwen. They're not... Larry sa- they're not letting Larry stay at the house. Yes, they are. Oh. Don't you remember at the very end what he said? Gwen says, he's going to stay with me. Do you want to stay with us too? And Richard shakes his head, don't do it. You're not staying with us. And he goes, I'm just going to stick around here and keep an eye on Bernie's place. So it's implied he stays at Bernie's place okay, for the weekend. but the movie is not... That's what you're hung up on. That's where that's where you drew the line. You're like everything else in here is pretty much on point and realistic. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, John Cryer edition for both Larry and Richard could have been good in both. Oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, Billy. Roger Ebert hated this movie. Oh, I bet <laughs> one star. And he said their behavior and not noticing is so idiotic we can't take them seriously or care about what they do. Roger doesn't really get comedies that well though. He like he said Tommy Boy stinks and some other things and like well ask. look Tommy Boy. While I love Tommy Boy, you can objectively look at Tommy Boy and be like this isn't like it's a, a great movie. I know Max, you're not the right person. <laughs> um, the bratty little kid in the film is Jason Walliner, who became the director and producer in television. He For did a new girl, new girl, funny or die presents and Adult Swim 
Venom action comedy series, Eagle Heart, starring Chris Elliott. He was really good. He was great in this. So Weekend on Bernie's lives on, too, because 2009, the rapper Trey Doe made the Bernie dance song. Have you seen that? I've not. So, Is it just him being like dead? No, no. So it, I remember because, you know, I work at a bar where there's college kids. This song gets played all the time. And the song goes, first, you got to get up in your drunk man's dance. Let your neck loose. Let your head go bopping. Now bend your knees and bow and sweep or sway <laughs> nonstop it. And it's like everyone does like the Weekend at Bernie's dance. That's great. Yeah. And by the way, so if you want to know what to get me for my birthday. Oh, I'm always up for a gift suggestion. So in you're, th- you're difficult to shop for sometimes. I am. So in 2011, a real life Weekend at Bernie's happened. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Robert Young and Mark Rabinuso found their friend Jeffrey Jarrett dead and took him out for a night of fun. Shut up. Using, I, I don't accept this as fact. Using Jarrett's credit card, strip clubs, ATM runs, and they swore they didn't know he was dead and they were given two years probation and community service. <laughs> So what am I giving you for your gift? Uh, kill Paul. Yeah, I was going to say, how, come on. How, Paul's what, the weekend at Bernie's. Paul would be good. He's small, no. too. We can move him around. Jesus, can we move on, please? His kids would be sad. All right. Are we ready to talk about the movie yes, now? You, you had to have made it weird, so I appreciate <laughs> that. Oh, good Lord. All right, Max. Um, This is a movie that we should be able to go through pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Three minutes later. So this movie starts as all 80s movies start. <laughs> with the MGM line? Yeah, and with like a basic montage explaining the characters which i yeah i don't i don't i don't i don't, sc- I don't <laughs> scoff at that like i actually think it's like quite helpful <laughs> but like the guy like oh you're getting too quick here you're getting too quick here just slow down slow okay. down all right so we, we start we start off we start <laughs> we start off with richard right so richard is like the on the up and up wearing the suit yeah. cares about his job nice neighborhood Wa- well because it's his dad's place but you don't know that yet. but you don't know that yet. Yeah. so he walks out of his dad's apartment as he gets out of his dad's apartment there's this like big guy with a big gut and a wife beater <laughs> yep. spraying the sidewalk down. He's like, oh, good morning, right? You know, like whatever. But like the slapstickness starts immediately. <laughs> he sees a hot girl. And he sees a hot guy. girl and then accidentally turns around and sprays some guy who's like, Philip, <laughs> I'm outraged. I am outraged. <laughs> and then in classic 80s style, right? Cuts to Larry, who's wrong side of town. Jumpy area. Like there's graffiti all over the houses he's where he's at. Cigarettes. Yeah. And he's got shorts on. And he's he doesn't have a briefcase. He has an I heart New York like plastic bag. Right. Right. He's so this the- is like the two sides of New York, right? Yeah. Like there's the grummy, grimy side. And then there's like the nice, you know, Going to the Hampton side. Yeah, and the song is Hot and Cold by Jermaine oh, Stewart. Oh, man. Some <laughs> like it hot. I could listen to the song. I love that they almost named the movie Some Like It Hot. Maybe this should be my wedding song. This should be your wedding song. <laughs> I'm 100% on board with that. My first So, dance. So you get to the corner where our friend Richard is waiting for Larry, who, of course, is always late. This just You're, you're dropping yep. in their personality left and right. Hey, you know right away who they are. Right. And you got a heat wave going on. It's hot in New York. Oh, yeah. It's, it's important Day. to know. Labor, Labor Day weekend. weekend. Yeah. They get to the corner. They're walking together. They're on. The, they're going through, I assume, that's Central Park. It is Central Park. They're walking through Central Park. They get mugged. <laughs> Getting mugged in Central Park is the most 80s movie thing ever. With a gun. Crocodile Dundee, yeah. mugged in Central Park. Yeah. Like, everybody gets mugged in Central Park. And they just go, it's too hot, and walk away. Not, not they. Richard's terrified. Yeah, Larry, Larry is like, it's too hot for this and slaps his gun away. And they just <laughs> wa- so you you you're again learning about these characters. Larry is the guy who like he understands the underbelly of New York. Yeah. Richard is like, Philip, I'm outraged. <laughs> you're so, gonna kill this for me. I'm no, I'm gonna keep doing it forever. I love it so much. So they're on their way. There's this one scene that is irrelevant to anyone else in the world except for me. There are these already? Yeah. There's these kids that are playing with a fire hydrant yeah. that's partially cracked open. That's very New York. So this guy comes over and he's like, Hey, let me get that for you because he's gonna open it up so they can have more water and when he opens it up the sheer strength of the hydrant knocks him back like 15 feet yeah but then the kids five seconds later are like running their hands through it and the pressure is not even there so were you watching this with like a notepad and just like hmm. no i just it was just <laughs> i i noticed it because it's an example of just like it's the metaphor sla- it's for sla- the it's egalitarian slaps, it's, yeah it's <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Anyways, they're, look, they're on their way to work. It's the weekend. Everybody else is enjoying their life and they're working on the weekend. Yeah, no AC in the place. No AC because they're cheap, which, by the way, that's all businesses. Really? Like, you and I are sweating right now oh, yeah, because it's Sunday and they won't run the <laughs> AC in here. So they get to their big building. They're going up to the whatever floor to get some work done on the weekend. Yep. Immediately, again, it's obvious who cares about their career and who doesn't. Larry does not. Larry wants to go to the beach. Yes, he does. He grabs all of Richard's paperwork that he's thumbing through. Which is so Wall Street. It's this like so, laminate like, big piece of paper. It, it, it's, it's honestly, it's... <laughs> the printer had to be like the size of Bulgaria. It's classic frozen orange juice. Like, I don't understand what they're doing. No. I don't know what their job is. We don't know anything about it. You don't it. see anything they're looking at. Actually. Nothing. They, they don't show us. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> so they go, when they say we're going to go to the beach, you assume they're going to the beach, but they really just go to the top roof 
of this building. Very tarry. Very tarry. So it's <laughs> so hot out that the tar is like melting. So while they're up there, I think Larry says, you know, can I go in the water? And Richard's like, I don't know. You just ate. And they have a baby pool. Yeah. So they go into the baby pool. And for Larry, he's just there because he feels like he has to be there. He's not really contributing. No, he's a dreamer. Yeah. He's in the pool. He might be the guy from Mannequin. Could be. <laughs> Richard, on the other hand, discovers a discrepancy. Yes. And that discrepancy, I'll just give you a little spoiler alert. What he basically finds, it turns out they work for an insurance company and he finds out that checks were cut on insurance policies multiple times for the same person that didn't exist. Yep. So $2 million. So, yeah. So someone embezzled $2 million. So for them, this is big, right? They're working their way up the corporate ladder. They're going to bring this to their boss's attention. Everything is going to change. Yeah. This is going to be their ticket out of uh, purgatory and having to work on the weekends. So they head into work on Monday and they're ready. They're going to have their big meeting with Bernie Lomax, their boss. While they're walking in, the summer intern... Gwen. Gwen goes by. And again, you see the personality here. Like Larry is like, go for, go it. for it, right? Yeah. And Richard's like, I don't know. I'm not ready to and do it. And then there's a cramped elevator scene. Always Cramped a good- <laughs> elevator they just scene. Play the- well, sometimes, you know, when people play the hits, it's because they're hits. Yeah, they work, right? <laughs> yeah. And then is it... Is it that scene where you get the dead ant, or is that later? Uh, it's when they come out, <laughs> out, of the, out of the elevator. Go ahead and tell, tell, their, tell their interaction story. So Larry's trying to get Richard to talk to Gwen. He finally pushed him. He's like, fine, I'll do it. And he goes up to Gwen. He goes silent. And you're like, oh, God, say something. You know, it's really long. And he goes, my aunt is very sick. <laughs> and she just looks horrified. And he walks off. And Larry is trying to, like, save it. He wants to be like, and he's got nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> and it, and the best part is Jonathan Silverman goes, I don't even have an aunt. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> So after the first disaster of a meeting that they have, you then have a second opportunity for Richard and Gwen. Larry pushes them in the elevator, and this is before their meeting with Bernie, and he lands the date. So he's kind of coming off on top of the world from landing yeah. the date with her. So they then get the phone call from Bernie Lomax's executive assistant who says, Mr. Lomax is ready to see you. Yep. They head into the office to go talk to him. This is it. I mean, this is their big moment, right? So great they, office, too. It's a great office. So they walk into his office. They sit down. He says, all right, what do you got for me, guys? As soon as they start talking, he gets up and goes to the bathroom, which I assume, based on how I perceived the entire scene, was to go and use cocaine. Yeah, probably. He comes back out, like, sniffing and rubbing his nose, and he was only in there for a few seconds. So he couldn't no possibly sm- have peed. <laughs> no smoking in here. Yeah, he's he smoking. also sees, like, he's long, smoking. weird cigarettes, and then, yeah, Larry wants to light up a cigarette, and he's like, no smoking in here. <laughs> so they hand over the information to Bernie, which is covered in tar from yep. when they were on the roof, and Bernie is kind of like, wow, like the guys, good job. it was a great job. But then as Larry is like, well, you know, I worked really hard on finding this, da-da-da-da-da, he's like, well, wait, what about this? Did you think about this? This is a mistake. Why didn't you double check it? And he's like terrified. And he's like, well, that was actually Richard's part. Yeah. The banter between the two of them, how they're constantly deflecting to each other is part of what's charming about this movie. It's just fast. It's fun. It's very quick. So Richard then comes and shows him, no, like this is legit. Yeah, Somebody like stole the policies, $2 million. The policies were cut after the person died. Right. Like they like reissued them. Basically. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So Bernie knows that, oh gosh, these guys have found it. At this point in the movie, you don't know that Bernie's a bad guy. You don't know. No. Yeah. Bernie's like, guys, this is going to be big. And he uh, puts his arms around him. He's like, fellas, coming to my house. Coming to my house. So they they're, they got to they got to go over these numbers. Bernie says we got to go over these numbers. We got to decide. You know, really dig into this. Um, why don't we work this weekend? And why don't you guys head on up to my place in the Hamptons? Talk to my assistant. She'll tell you how to get there. You're gonna take a ferry. Da 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 da. This ends the scene, and the two of them are like, we've done it. Yep. Jack jackpot. We're ready to go. High fives. So you have this kind of parallel story going on. You've got their career, the rise of their career. Yeah. Plus you have like Gwen accepting going on a date. This with is them. a slice of life movie. It's it, very important. It's, it's really, it's really important. It's layered. It's beautiful. It's a it's seven really layer beautiful. cake of emotion. So what's additionally hilarious to me is the minute that they conclude the meeting where he has his arms around both of them. Yeah. And he's like, you know, this is a big deal. <laughs> It immediately cuts to classic, offensive, Italian stereotype mafia dinner yep. where he's looking at this guy. He's like, you got to kill them. <laughs> we got to kill these two guys. And the mafia guy like can't pronounce any of the food. Right. Like he's like creme brulee. Yeah. Yeah. And then he he also is like, you know, we don't do that anymore. So at the table, you've got the mafia guy. You've got his hitman. Paulie. And then you have his helper. Yep. I'm helpers only where I can come with and his girlfriend. Yeah. His girlfriend <laughs> who is was also from Friday the 13th part three. Really? Yeah. Oh, look at that pole. Yeah. His girlfriend underneath the table with her shoe off footsie. is playing footsie with Bernie. So apparently those two are having an affair with yep. each other. While this is all going on, Bernie's like, I've got a plan. This is how we're going to kill them. Yeah. They're coming up to my place in the Hamptons. I'll make a note, leave money out. It'll look like it was them that embezzled it. We're good to go. While this is going on, they're having their conversation. She continues to flirt with him and he's like, all right, I got to go. Bernie he gets up. He's like, I got to go. We'll get this all set. We're ready to go. And then the girlfriend Tina is like, I got to powder, powder my, my nose, nose and, and like, kisses oh, him. God. Yeah. So he kn- 
knows that she's fooling around with him. Yeah. And then he looks over to Polly and his other guy, and he's like, we got to kill Bernie. Yeah. So you know what, again, it's not a deep plot. It's not hard to follow. A double murder plan where someone who thinks they're going to murder two people is is actually getting murdered. There you go. That's actually kind of, that's layered. It's layered a little bit. The seven layer nacho. So I also think it's incredibly cocky on his behalf that this girl follows Bernie out to his car where she like mounts him yeah. on the side of the car and is like, oh, I guess nobody will see this. So she's like, I need to see you, Bernie, baby. I need to see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bernie. Oh, Billy. I can't not she, think of Cable Guy when she says, oh, Bernie. <laughs> she's like a Long Island girl. In this she's movie. a super yeah. Long Island girl. So they are outside and he says, all right, I got a plan. Come over to the house at like nine o'clock. Use my key. Let yourself in. I'll be there and we'll see each other. That's called foreshadowing. Big time. Big time foreshadowing. So cuts from this beautiful mafia dinner to the date. A good old Jewish Chinese restaurant. So Richard and Gwen are on their wonderful date with each other. What was it called? Like matzo ball? And something it's two H's, Himmons and Hymans. Hymans or something, yeah, yeah not Hymans. <laughs> so the date's going really well. Yeah. Better than expected. And he She's it, like, why didn't you ask me out earlier? Right. And he it's funny because he just effortlessly falls into these absurd concocted lies that are unnecessary <laughs> for the most part. But again, this is the slapstick Charlie Chaplin nature of what's going on. Yep. So it's going really well, and they want the night to continue. She's got five roommates. They're though. all doing their hair. Yeah. Can't go to her place. Yeah. So he is like, uh, yeah, yeah, we can go to my place. Yeah. <laughs> this is <laughs> the scene's really funny. So it's very Mikey and Swingers. It is. So they go they go to his house, <laughs> which is his dad's house. Yep. So he goes in. He's walking on tiptoes. He's whispering. Very, very, uh, the neighbor upstairs gets very upset when they hear a lot of noise. Thin walls. Am I whispering (laughs) thin walls? Thin walls. Well, she did say she would rather die than live with her parents. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. It's funny. We both would have done this. I have to tell you, like, talking about this movie is humiliating. Like, as we sit here and go, like, I feel like you and I are are above, I actually feel like you and I are above this movie. And I know you don't feel that way. But we're sitting here giving, like, a diagnostic, like, oh, the thin walls, thin walls. It's okay. So, as they continue to walk through the apartment, they sit down more I hate more lies she's like oh i love your apartment it looks so like my re- parents are dead yeah <laughs> 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 he just makes up outrageous <laughs> lies. So they start making out on the couch. He turns the light off. And then his dad, who apparently was the director of this yep. movie, which is wild, <laughs> walks into the kitchen, <laughs> goes to the to the refrigerator to get something to drink. Makes up that is his butler. And then's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. And he, what is his name? Monroe? Yeah. He's like, Monroe, set set the clothes out for tomorrow. <laughs> How about I lay, no, lay out my suit for tomorrow. He's like, oh, I'll lay you out. Yeah. And then he leaves and <laughs> Gwen is like, you let your butler talk to you that way? And he doesn't even say, like, oh, he's a veteran? Yeah, he's got a metal plate in his head. <laughs> this movie, so I can't even say this with a straight face, Max. It's quality. So Gwen knows that this is obviously, like, bull crap, Storms right? out, it's over. Like, there's there's other parts in this, too, where she's like, we have such a nice apartment. You know, I really appreciate some guys try to impress you. You took me to that dump that we went to for yeah. dinner. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why I did that. <laughs> So the so she leaves disgusted. We then cut to the next morning where Bernie has arrived at his island paradise. On his boat, which I, is called Premium. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was Prome- Prometheus at first when I saw it. I was like, no, it's not. No, it's the precursor to the alien That's movies. what I thought, right? You never know, Bernie. It's a, it's a Glastron GX236 boat. Of course it is. You would know that. <laughs> so as Bernie moves through the island, he... He's tipping everybody. T- yep. He's yep. like, buy yourself a girlfriend. And he gets into his infamous oh, the, the, golf cart. Yeah, the golf the, cart. The, yeah, that you yeah. love. He gets yeah. into his golf cart. Yes, he does. Polly arrives shortly after this and gives a call to Bernie in a Don Johnson outfit for some yeah reason. big time Don Johnson <laughs> outfit and also when Bernie's coming to his house like he he's got some like landscaping guy that he didn't pay and kind Who's of living poorly. under his house yeah it was weird it was very <laughs> weird he's got a gardener and anyway so Polly calls him and Bernie I guess there was a concern that they were on a secured line but Bernie's basically like I want to murder these guys yeah, like we got to murder him I've got the letter ready but he doesn't realize we find out later that all of this was on his answering machine and it was recording this is back in the 80s when people had answering machines which is great yep so larry and richard have their packed bag they get to the ferry they think they're about to miss the ferry so they're running as fast as they can they jump off the dock onto the ferry only slap stick away <laughs> to find out that the ferry's just pulling up to the dock so they weren't really needing to rush it's a laugh a minute it's really great stuff <laughs> so they get on the fa- it's a laugh a minute so they get on the ferry everybody's partying on the ferry right this is just party 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 richard has sat next to some older woman who he's talking to larry's out trying to just find girls yep. like he's just ready to party they get to the island it cuts to Polly showing up at Bernie's. Yes. <laughs> Max, take this. This is your favorite scene in the movie. Go ahead. So, I mean, he's basically just trying to plan out the murder with uh, Polly, and Polly takes out a needle 
and syringes <laughs> Bernie in the butt. Bernie has the like goofiest smile like, <laughs> and collapses so like gently and lightly in the chair. Instantly dead. They put the sunglasses on him. Polly takes out some drugs yeah. and the needle, puts it in his pocket. So I have Members a- only jacket, I think? Yeah. Okay. I have a spicy take. Is this the funniest death in movie history? I don't know. What's funnier? Murder's usually not that funny. No, it's not. I'll have to think about that. Yeah. I don't know if it's the funniest death ever. It's just so funny. You, you, for, I believe you think it's the funniest death ever. But from, remember, and also too, like the funny thing with Polly, he's dressed like Don Johnson, but after he kills him, he takes puts out the, the little thing. priest outfit yeah. and puts it on underneath his shirt. Yeah. So he's now sitting with his sunglasses in his leather chair in his office and he's dead. Yeah. And Polly has no reason to think he's not dead because he just injected him with what I assume was enough poison to kill a horce. I think heroin. You think? Yeah. Could be, yeah. That makes a heron's OD. Because he wants to plant the OD. All yeah, right, yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah, Sure, makes sense. So Richard and Larry show up at the house. Yep. They're like, hey, do you know where Bernie Lomax is? They're on the beach. They ask a uh, lifeguard, hey, do you know where Bernie Lomax's house is? And they bring him up to the house. Before we get into that part of the story, because we're about halfway through the movie now, why don't we stop real quick, weekend at Bernie style, and have a quick note from our sponsors. Buzz in the Tower is also brought to you by Dobie Real Estate. You can find them at wearedobie.com. I mentioned earlier that the dream house, Bernie Lomax's place in the Hamptons, is it's a it's an amazing house. It's really cool. It's really cool. They built it just for the movie and, and then, then they, they tore destroyed it, down. it. I know, which is incredible to me. If you want to live like that, if that's the house that you want, who doesn't? Uh, right? Go to Dobie Real Estate. It's so important to find the right real estate agents to make sure that you're not just finding the house you want, but not overpaying for it. And then in Bernie's case, I assume the estate had to probably sell the house because he obviously was murdered. So when you're trying to find someone, hopefully not under the pretense of murder, to sell your house, reach out to Simon and his team. They have the best agents, the best marketing, and they love Weekend at Bernie's. So, I mean, where where can you possibly go wrong in that equation? They like it hot. And some like it cold. <laughs> 400 million in sales in 2021, 1,000 homes sold. Reach out today, tell them Buzz in the Tower sent you, and get ready for the best home buying or home selling experience that you've ever had. So they get to Bernie's house and they decide that they're going to just let themselves in. And they're blown away. There's a heated blown pool. away. Oh my gosh. The 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 architecture of the house. There's like a huge. conversation pit but 80 style. There's right. lots of teal, pink, very kind of it's This is how you would decorate your beach house. Yeah. It's very dated. It's a, it's a square too, which is a very kind of strange shape for a beach house. You're a strange shape for a beach house. I'm oblong. So while they're in there Larry is all about everything that's going on. Yeah. Richard's still like a little whiny until bouncing blonde beauty Tawny yep. skips into the house. Tawny's also- Can I borrow the boat? So Tawny was actually played by Eloise Brody, and she was in To Die For, Troop Beverly Hills, Don't Mess With the Zohan. No, 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 no. And Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps. Yeah, she's always the blonde. She's always the blonde. She's so good looking. She's really pretty. Yeah. So she comes in there, and that's when Larry turns to Richard. He's like, you're still mad we came? And he's like, nah. no, I was wrong. This is great. <laughs> So they're checking out the house. They they look in the refrigerator. They've got champagne in the Larry fridge. Larry already pops a bottle of champagne. Larry doesn't care. Larry is like already, it's very clear that Larry doesn't care about anything. So interesting insight though. Uh, Larry lays on the couch and Richard's like, hey, we got to work hard. And he, Larry goes, my dad worked hard all his life. And they just showed him the door at the end. Little bit of insight that his dad never got anything for working, so he's gonna live his life to the fullest. Yeah. So kind of like more get care- deep, get deep on. I don't know that, that one No, scene no, it's all right. I'm sure it did because it's you. That's why it resonated <laughs> with you because you're like, I'll show you, Dad. I'm gonna be a bartender and squeeze lemons. Well, no, my dad enjoys work. I just like pouring liquid. Does he the enjoy? Cup. He enjoys you and his family. Does he really enjoy work? I think he he enjoys being in control of things. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Is that creepy? I don't know. You're a weirdo. Does he enjoy strong women with big dogs? Yes, he does. What do you think I got it from? I, I have no idea. <laughs> no clue. So they, uh, they, he cracks a bottle of champagne. They're trying to find Bernie. They're going all over the place. They're like, Bernie, where are you? So they see the back of his head. He's yep. sitting in his leather chair. Maybe he's meditating. Yeah. They're like, Bernie. Oh, man. He's all partied out. So they, Don't they, slap your boss's head. They have the first... <laughs> One arm around each shoulder moment, which yep. the first of many <laughs> wonderful moments. They pick him up. This is the 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 hilarity of this is uh, this is going to sound so creepy, but bear with me. Okay. Moving a human body is not easy. One that is like out cold yeah. and not not able to provide you any support you've whatsoever. So we have to do with fire training. We have to do with mannequins all the time. Yeah, but so you've, you've pulled real bodies. Right? I have. Well, not not this unconscious no. okay not like totally out oh. but we've done mannequins and it's hard like it's i mean you assume he's got mannequins gotta be, <gasps> i know not from the movie mannequin but you assume you assume bernie's what like 175 pounds 160 no, he's light. in this movie he's got to be like five five 
Okay, so let's say it's 150 pounds. Yeah. That's still 150 pounds of dead weight. Yeah, that's true. And so they're tripping all over each other, flipping them on the chair. So Richard digs into his pocket, finds the drugs, yep. finds the needle, <laughs> takes out his sunglasses, puts it under his nose to see if there's any like breathing going Very on. Very Sherlock Holmes of him. Very much. Then uh, <laughs> they takes his wrist for a pulse. Yep. And they're like, oh my God, like he's dead. What are we going to do? Larry's like, why me? Yeah, right? <laughs> While this is happening, all of a sudden, one of the drunk kind of beachgoers yep. opens the door and comes in moving party. Yeah, exactly. And what they both are stunned to find <laughs> the entire premise of this movie is that all these people are floating in and out of his house with no idea that Bernie Lomax is dead. Yeah. There's the Porsche, the guy who wants the Porsche, the tennis instructor who yeah. wants to buy his Porsche. And then like someone comes in and like accidentally sits on Bernie's hand and, oh, and she's oh, like, my. Oh, Bernie. Yeah, yeah. So while this is happening, there's two different reactions going on. Larry, you can see the wheels turning. Yep. Richard is disgusted. Yep. Absolutely disgusted. So this whole sequence of this party goes on for I don't know how long. It seems like it's quite a while. The to totally tubular torso dudes. Yeah, really the two personal trainers massaging trainers. him. Yeah, 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 they're like giving him like a I've never a, seen you this loose, Bernie. Then some <laughs> woman who is like obviously like either romantically involved or looking just drugs. Drug, yeah, looking for drugs. Thanks, says, Bernie, you got something for me yeah. and starts digging around his pockets and finds the drugs. So Richard's had enough. He, yep. he sees this going on. He's like, I'm calling the police. He picks up the phone to call the police. And Larry's like, wait, 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 hold on. Yeah. <laughs> this would be you trying to convince me that this is somehow okay. Larry frantically is trying to convince Richard that, no, no, this listen, can work. this can work. We can do this. And Richard's like, you are, you're a sick, sick person. <laughs> like, what, what is wrong with you? So while he's on the phone, which by the way, in this entire movie, Richard calls the police like 12 Third, times yeah. and every single time they're like, uh, like, oh dear, never mind. <laughs> oh, Philip and hangs up the phone. <laughs> So while this is happening, all of a sudden, Larry sees Gwen outside. I was like, wait a second. Look over there. And by the way, as much as we want to like bag on Larry for being the dirtbag of the two, all it took was Gwen for him to compromise all of his morals. These aren't great people. No. Yeah. They're, really, they're really not great people That's why we get all. along with them so well. Oh, man. So Larry sits down next to Bernie and just starts the weekend at Bernie's <laughs> yeah, movie. Like, yeah. this is the start of the hey, movie. Hey, buddy. Richard goes outside, apologizes to Gwen. I'm so sorry. This is so terrible. I, I, I feel awful about everything. All of the little intermediate scenes that are taking place in this movie are just slapstick fodder for what's going on with Bernie. Yep. Gwen tells Richard that she really wants to talk to Bernie and thank him. And Richard's like, ah, it's not a good idea. So Richard runs over to get Larry and says, we got to move Bernie now. Yeah. Gwen gets stopped by some creepy old guys that are hitting on her at the really party. Really creepy. So they put him up on their shoulders, uh, you know, the arms over the shoulders. Yep. He flops a couple times. All these people at the party are like, oh, that, that's Bernie, yeah, which yeah. again is wild to me that and that the, happened. The tennis instructor, he nods forward for 50000 for his Porsche. Yeah. He's like, oh, you're so happy. He even takes his sunglasses I off. I know, yeah. right? And so then he he gets, this is where you made your joke about the 8.3, right? Yeah, they flip him over the side. So they're running him around. He gets flipped over the side. He hits the sand and they're like, okay, we can leave him there for right now. Huge mistake. <laughs> I feel like, you remember the Simpsons where the pig gets launched and Homer's like, it's just a little airborne. It's still good. It's yes. still good. That's yes. Bernie. <laughs> That's Bernie. So Bernie's laying on the sand underneath the deck and then Richard has had enough, but then Richard sees Gwen walking on the beach per Larry who shows him like, hey, go check that out. So they go on a beautiful romantic walk with each other and they go up a lighthouse and it's all romance. It is. And, and they start making out. Well, um, no, no, it's not all Roman. No, that he falls more slapstick. R Richard gets uh, the, the, <laughs> lighthouse, right, right. the lighthouse light beams, beams him in the eye, eyes, and he falls down like six flights of stairs. <laughs> this movie is so ridiculous. <laughs> is there? Is there like what is the stretch of time between like a, a physical gag? Uh, like forty five seconds, I right? Think. It's like yeah. every minute. There's well, at least Bernie, some. If Bernie's on screen, it's always a physical oh gag. Oh, my God. So he falls down the flight of stairs. <laughs> they, they, they're they obviously in love with each other because that's also every 80s movie. It takes one day to fall in no love. No idea why she likes him. No idea. They're making out on the beach. It's perfect. And then I have to tell you, <laughs> as, as much as I make fun of this movie and as much as I like genuinely <laughs> think Bernie it's crap, there are some moments where I'm like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. They're making out on the beach and the and the water is just softly moving. And Bernie, Bernie yeah. just falls floats up onto the beach from the water face forward face looking forward at looking at them and it's just it's perfect the comedic timing is perfect i imagine them filming that scene <laughs> having the days. best time that anybody's ever had shooting a scene before <laughs> because it was it's actually bernie yeah so he had to have like laid still they probably had him tied to a rope and, they and they're like pulling him, him on it, it was yeah. amazing <laughs> so obviously richard freaks out he's like nope this is all wrong we can't do this right now you need flowers you need romance so he runs back he then goes and gets uh richard gets larry and was like, we got to go take care of our friend Bernie. We got to get him. Yeah. So, kind of funny story. Larry was with a girl. He 
you know, in a room. Oh, in the bedroom. That's yeah. right. They were upstairs in the bedroom. In the video and TV of this movie, that scene's cut out because in We Can Have Bernie's 2, Larry is a virgin. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's the most incredible <laughs> fact ever. That's the most oh, fact ever. Who thought that like people would care about continuity errors? I know. Like, oh, I, can't, I can't watch this. Larry, I, I am outraged. Larry's not a virgin. Mm. Philip. <laughs> you need to stop. You're going to burn oh, You know what? Fine. I won't do that. No, we do it like once or twice. How about some? Oh, sure, it's up. Let's do it. No, we, not we Bane. Can it, we're going to burn it. Oh, Bane. The darkness of Bernie. I don't have things that annoy you. You, you have everything that annoys everything you. that yeah. annoys me. Okay, so they got to go get Bernie. They got to fish him out of the water. Yep. <laughs> so they fish him out of the water. He looks gross. He looks awful. He's covered in water. He probably weighs an extra hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so they bring him inside and they throw him in a bedroom. They're like, let's you know throw him in a bedroom. <laughs> it's coming. This scene coming up, Max, has to be your favorite scene in the movie. Yes. Yeah. The mafia boss's girlfriend, who's Wasted. having the affair with Bernie, yeah. shows up. Wasted and furious. Yep. You better not be with another woman. Like bangs open the door. Who are you guys? She grabs a knife. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, if he's there with another woman, I'll kill him. Richard and Larry both have just totally come to terms with the fact that like, okay, playtime's yeah. over. She's going to go up there, find Bernie dead. That's the end of it. Yeah. Perfect. So she goes up there and you get this like really kind of cute music in the background and the elapsed time is like 15, 20 minutes. Does he make the comment like, well, they've been up there yeah. for 20 minutes. Yep. What's going on? Why haven't the police come yet? She comes out of the bedroom and she's like, she's like, oochie coochie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like singing and all happy. Lights a cigarette. Lisa comes downstairs and asks for some scotch. Yeah. And I think it was Larry that said, did usually Bernie? I get, usually I get yelled at when yeah. I just lay there. Yeah. And, and doesn't Larry say like, did Bernie seem different to you? And she's like, <laughs> nope. It's like same old <laughs> best Bernie, ever. best ever. And she <laughs> she leaves. And it's funny because only in this movie do you accept that necrophilia just took place and it's okay. So this is a real thing, though, when it comes to the functionality <laughs> I, of it. Max. It's called rigor. I, I it's called it's called rigor erectus, which is technically a primatism. Prime P R I A P I S M prism. I can't say it. I don't know, but, but I it, love that this, you look this, this actually up. happens. Yeah, this actually happens. So this movie so is factually historic. accurate. Yeah, totally, yeah. this is a scientific movie. Yeah. So she makes love to her dead boyfriend one last time while the mob's second in command. While the mob's watches. yeah, so the mob's second in command is seeing all this happen. So then, of course, what does he do? He puts the call in. You didn't kill him, Polly. Yeah. yeah. So then, the, and, the, but they said earlier too, Polly's been rusty on this stuff. So they're exhausted at this point, and yeah. Larry's like. Richard, go to sleep. We'll figure it out in the morning. Larry's going to go party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While he sleeps, right? I yep. mean, I, what does he sleep until like 10 or 11? They wake 11 30. up. 11 30. The next morning, you start off. Again, this, I, I, do, I do have to tell you, as much as this movie is garbage, <laughs> this is a really funny scene. You cut to, they're on the deck by the pool. <laughs> yeah. And he's and these playing, he's playing Monopoly. Larry's playing Monopoly with Bernie. <laughs> yeah. He's like Ma rolling making, the dice, making daiquiris. Making daiquiris. <laughs> these like women come by. They're like, hey, Bernie. Hey, Larry. So Larry has already now ingrained himself in the culture of yep. the Hamptons. Like yep. everybody knows who he is. He waves and then you see him pull a string and Bernie's hand comes up and waves. Genius. Genius. First time this is done in movies? I, I'm not aware of any yeah. other time this happened. <laughs> Richard wakes up with... I think what I would call like a, a moral crisis hangover. Yep. He's like, I can't believe what's going on. Um, in between all of this, Polly comes back. They cut to Polly coming back to the island because he can't believe that Bernie's still alive yeah. and he wants to go fix whatever's wrong. So they get back to the island. Richard is now on the deck. And when when the look on Richard's face, when Larry shows him the string tied to Bernie's hand and that it's waving <laughs> is incredible. Like it is pure disgust. He's mortified. Like, what are you doing? I can't believe you're doing this. So he's like, that's it. I'm calling the cops. Goes inside and then Gwen shows up. The running gag of Gwen being the reason that he yeah. doesn't call the cops every time is perfect. She wants to see Bernie. He's, he's being, right. he's like, no, he's like, can't see you right now. We're, we're working really hard. We're and in the middle of a lot of work. They wheel him off the, off the edge and somehow. Well, hold on. You missed the best part. Okay. So she's like, you're lying. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. He's dead. Yeah. And she's like, what? He's like, you don't believe me? Let's go see him. Goes out on the deck and they're like, where's Bernie? And. <laughs> Larry's like, oh, he went to go get some daiquiri. What did he say? Daiquiri mix. Daiquiri yeah. mix. Yeah. He's like, no, he didn't. He's dead. <laughs> they, they, he wheeled him off the deck onto the sand underneath the deck again. Which, when he does that, he hits Polly, and it seems like Bernie's attacking him. Which is a, <laughs> is more classic slapstick. So Polly like is, chokes him uh, out. Yeah, Polly's underneath there. Bernie flies on top of him. They have a physical altercation. He chokes him out. This time, he is a hundred percent sure that he killed him. He heads back into the house because he wants to make that phone call to the police. But while he's doing that, he uncovers the answering machine with the message about kill the two idiots. Yeah. 
He then looks and $100, around and hundred thousand dollars. Well, they discover the money. Yeah, the note, which is so inappropriate. The note <laughs> the that Ber- the mo- the note that Bernie <laughs> wrote implied that Larry and Richard were lovers and that the money they were stealing was so that Larry could get a sex change, which is all that Larry cared about. He's like, I have a reputation to uphold. And and Richard's like, there is no sex change. (laughs) (laughs) What are we doing? What are we doing? Oh my God. So now they realize, oh my God, like there's someone after us to kill us. And this is where Larry intelligently spins the whole thing. Yeah. What is the one thing that we just learned from this? They won't kill us as long as we're with Bernie. Because in the in the thing that Bernie says, wait until I'm gone. They don't know that the bad guys killed Bernie. Yeah. They assume that Bernie just OD'd. So the way for them to protect themselves from getting killed is to keep Bernie alive. It's pretty smart. And that's exactly what they do, Max. <laughs> so now their ticket to safety is Bernie and they go to look for him and they can't see him. He's nope. gone. They get underneath the deck and there's a little brat kid who has buried him in sand. The kid's such a jerk. He's such a jerk. He throws a middle finger. He feels like he's from like Better Off Dead. I, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of the he, role. When he smacks his butt and goes, kiss it. <laughs> so they get Bernie back up into the house. While cleaning him off, they have to use a vacuum cleaner yep. on his mustache. <laughs> they, use, they, use the, yeah, they use the vacuum cleaner on his head. Pull his toupee off. The toupee is such a f- bad fake toupee because you can see his head is huge. Oh, it's so funny. And then they hear gunshots. So they're yeah. assuming they're dead, but it ends up being the, the kid, kid with a little toy gun. So Polly is feeling good. He's like, I killed Bernie. I'm good. He's yeah. about to leave the island. So for Richard and Larry, they got to get off the island, but they got to do it with Bernie. So now you've got these, you know, put Bernie in the wheelbarrow or the, what is it, a wagon? Yeah, it's a little wagon. They drag him down a ramp. His head's bouncing off of the boards. They spill him out. Yeah, he he (laughs) eats it. They turn the corner and he eats it. They get him into the little golf cart Porsche that you love so much. They then are flying to get onto the ferry that gets off. Now, while they're on there, they do the classic shoelace tie. Like, everybody's got the it looks really good. three-legged race. Yeah. And they're, like, running, and he'll, like, he'll take his arm and, like, throw it up in the air be like, wait, wait! Yeah. Pauly sees this and was like, what it. is yeah. going on? <laughs> like, stop the ferry! I gotta get off right now. I can't believe Bernie's not dead. They missed the ferry. Yep. But Richard and Larry know they got to get off of the island. So, so they're they like, need- oh, so they need Bernie's boat. So they're going to go back to the house. And one of them's like, I'll go back and you stay with Bernie. And they're like, no, 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 we're not. Le- I need to be yeah. with Bernie. So they go back to the house with Bernie, who there's all these scenes where they're tied up and he, they just eat it. Like Bernie just dead drops to the floor. <laughs> yeah. So when they get there, they all of a sudden hear this like angry knocking at the door. Yep. So they assume it's the people that are coming to kill them. So Richard takes a log. like Pretty a, much a, a two by yeah. four. <laughs> and they open the door and he knocks out. And it was the guy who was living under the deck who yep. did work for Bernie and he didn't pay him and he was pissed at him. And the first Rambo call out, you remember this? No. He goes, you can come out, Rambo, went to Richard. After oh, and, and, that's a t- Larry, and, yeah. and that's a tip of the hat yeah. f- because the director did Rambo. Yeah. I, that's right. You're right. And then the second guy who's the gardener comes in. He's got a knife. They don't realize he's a gardener and he knocks him out too. And that's the second call back to Rambo. How is that the second call back to Rambo? That guy is the actor George Chung who played the villain in Rambo oh, part, shut part, First Blood up. Part 2. That is, one you're right. Up. You're absolutely right. And he right. also wears a very similar costume <laughs> to the one in First Blood Part 2. I can't believe it's that incredible. That movie. Yeah. Oh my God, that's incredible. <laughs> the Ramboism of it all. It's the most weekend at Bernie's <laughs> thing ever. So both those guys get knocked out. They get thrown into the pantry yep. and the door gets locked. It's and getting weird. It's getting real weird. Now we're starting to, we're getting to thick It's getting it. very bad thingsy. I love that movie. You know it's that. so bad. It is very bad things, but a little bit lighter. The music is more fluffy. Do, 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 do. It's very uncomfortable. They then take off to go to the boat. When they get to the boat, they tie Bernie up on the back seat. So he's like sitting upright. <laughs> yeah. Again, there's all these unnecessary. And they don't know how to drive the they boat. They don't know how to drive the boat. They bring like the, the roof of the boat comes up like a convertible and it, like yeah. lifts Bernie off the ground. They tear it off the anchor on yeah. the side. Yeah. They, they get away. <laughs> they hit a few boats. They hit a few boats. <laughs> they get away on the boat. They're the out there. The, 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 I, this is my favorite part of the whole movie. When they throw the anchor? They hit a bump and Bernie falls out of the boat. Yep. And he's basically water skiing and they don't know. Yeah. They then go by these buoys and they, <laughs> have, and they have no idea what these buoys are. So Larry's like, just stay close to him. And then you hear this ding, <laughs> ding. And it's, it's, it's Bernie, Bernie's dead body just <laughs> racking into these things every single time. So the stuntman who did this, I can't believe they actually put a stuntman out there for those things. Sure. He broke some ribs. I, I believe it. <laughs> yeah. It looks horrible. Why it looks very painful. For that? This is so funny because there's other parts where it's clearly not a yeah. stuntman and it's yeah. like fake, but they, so this go, this takes place forever. They get him back in the boat. They're trying to get off the island. And then, of course, what happens? They run out of gas on the boat. Yeah. So it cuts to them 
using him as a flotation by <laughs> flotation device. <laughs> I can't believe that for the last hour we've been talking about this movie. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's a cool, wonderful time they, to be alive. They get to the, they get to shore with him. He's got to weigh 300 pounds. He's waterlogged, <laughs> covered in sand, but whatever. So they get him to shore, and the whole time this is happening, you see Polly, who's like frantic. He's yep. losing his mind a little bit. Yeah. So Polly then gets in, and he is on his way to Bernie's house as well. They get back to Bernie's house. Richard and Larry bring him inside. <laughs> this is, I'm in a close second place for this being my favorite part of the movie, by the way. So Gwen shows up, demands to know what's going on. Richard is like, get the hell out of here right now. Yeah. She's like, I won't. And then all of a sudden, Larry is dragging Bernie down a flight of stairs. Yes. And she's, and he's yelling at her saying, people are trying to kill us. Can we stay at your house until we get out of here? We're in a lot of trouble. And while this is going on, thump, 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 thump. And Gwen is just like, oh, my God, mouth jarred wide open. And and Larry stops, sits down, grabs Bernie by the hair, picks his head up, slams it into the metal rail on the stairs <laughs> yeah. and says, what? It's just Bernie. <laughs> that might be my favorite. I take back what I said on the buoys. That's my favorite scene in the movie. When she when she's sitting there and it was like, yeah. oh, and then 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 it's like, we didn't kill him. It wasn't us. Do we look like people who could kill someone? Yeah. This is absolutely incredible. I think almost immediately after the statement, do we look like people that would kill someone? The pantry breaks The out. pantry breaks open, and he has to smack both of them in the head again. With glasses. And Gwen's in. like, what is going on? <laughs> Polly bursts in, <laughs> says something, I assume, in Italian. I yeah. don't know what it is. Shoots Bernie <laughs> like four times in the, <laughs> the chest. chest. Yeah. This is another great scene. Richard's like, oh, I, I didn't see anything. And Larry's I'm like, blind. I'm blind. <laughs> He's just moving his arms around. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> this, you're losing it. I wish people could see your face right now. You love this movie so much. So then he takes the gun to shoot them. He's out of bullets. And yeah. then Paulie's lost his mind at this point, which is yeah. also what makes it really Understandable funny. Understandable, too. He opens up his jacket and he's like, but this gun's not out of bullets. Yeah. He's at point blank range with them, them, shooting them and can't hit them. They're running around and trying to hide. He hits the stereo yeah. and you get like this music. Dun, 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 dun. Larry plays the hero. He's like, go on without me. I'll, I'll distract him. I, o- I also love that Polly like f- slips and falls through the holes in the circular staircase as yep. he's going after them. <laughs> So he sends Richard and Gwen to go hide in a bedroom yeah. while Larry goes back to fight them. Uses a phone cord to wrap him up. Right. And they and have also, like a... Also, Bernie accidentally kicks, kicks him, him in the, the groin. groin. <laughs> you got him a groin <laughs> shot. In the movie. Of course. Like and it matches. <laughs> this is the part that's so slapstick. So he pushes Bernie's foot away to get up the stairs yeah. and then his foot kicks him in the crotch and it's the same time in this operatic song that's on that's yeah. like, oh, that's when he gets knocked right in the crotch. It's timing great comedic timing at its best so as he ties him up he gives him a, a punch i think knocks him out yep. and then richard and gwen come down additionally when Polly falls bernie's arm comes up and like holds him and this is it that's the end of the movie <laughs> it then cuts to the police being there which i also think is hilarious like this guy <laughs> Polly comes out of the house in a straight jacket <laughs> they put him immediately in a straight jacket yeah. which would never happen nope. and and obviously the belief is that Polly murdured which he did. Like, yeah. as who ended up murdering. The, the gunshots kind of show it all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're all sitting on the deck. They're all having a Laughing. chat. Yeah. Bernie still falls out of the ambulance a couple times. There's a few more slapstick moments yeah, yeah. to get in there. He's at the end. He's on the beach. And 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 then, as we spoke about at the beginning, Gwen has invited Richard to stay with her and her family for a couple days, and Larry's yeah. just going to hang out and continue life as Bernie Lomax. Did you watch the after credit scene? I did not. Is there an after credit scene? So they're at Gwen's house for dinner. Like, Richard and Larry are there, too. And somehow they were helicopter lifting Bernie out and he falls through the skylight. That's absolutely incredible. No, it's not. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. All right. Um, I didn't think it was the MC universe or whatever. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Uh, Max, that is. That's enough. (laughs) An hour and 23 minutes later or however long we're done editing. That, my friend, is Weekend at Bernie's. Love it. Love it. Thank you for this gift. Thank you, Max. (laughs) As I say every week, Max, when we're done with the Herculean feat of talking about classic film, that takes us to our favorite part of the show. The Buzz in the Tower Fan Spotlight. This week's Buzz in the Tower Fan Spotlight is none other than our newest patrons, Mavericks, Carlos and Natasha. Who I met this weekend. Who you met this weekend. They are postal workers from Massachusetts. They came in town on a road trip. 
They well, were... they, they won a Founders uh, Brewery contest because he had a tattoo. He has 80% of his body covered in tattoos, Ooh. but he has a Founders de- a founders Beer tattoo, and he won a contest. They gave him like $1,500 worth of swag. Oh, my God. That's awesome. And like he got all the cool stuff. Yeah. I'll, I'll post a picture of it. It's Please amazing. do. And swung by the bar whose name we never speak Schmore in Ann Arbor, Schmorskeepers, or Sleeps, as people call it. And you got a live in-person visit from fans, which I'm jelly of. It was Super so jelly. cool. They were awesome. Super awesome. The, you FaceTime me. I was at my kid's soccer game, yeah. and I was like, this is great i'm so I've, i'm bummed i couldn't be there but that's awesome that they came huge fans of the show like i said patrons visited us in person uh we asked them what their thoughts were on weekend at bernie's which i can only assume are great because it's the greatest film ever made so let's hear what they had to say hello buzz in the tower this is carlos and natasha hey guys uh we're here to do a fan spotlight um the movie weekend at bernie's weekend at bernie's um natasha did you enjoy the movie i did i mean i love myself some comedy so can't beat that. Uh, I really like the chemistry between Andrew McCarthy and Jonathan Silverman. I, I was shocked they they didn't really do anything else except we can have Bernie's too. Can we talk about how Bernie's still alive or dead? <laughs> he was alive enough to do a second movie, uh, which wasn't really uh, well received. Which I'm shocked. I I enjoyed that one too. Well, just a little bit about Weekend and at Bernie's. I mean, I gotta say, I love the part where uh, Richard takes his <laughs> date Gwen home, and uh, the butler. Butler slash dad. Oh, I laughed so much. And I mean, Carlos, what else did you like? Um, well, I really love the uh, continuous gag of the retired hitman tr- continuously trying to kill Bernie and failing miserably. And uh, I mean, just their actual like the dumb luck that they had throughout the whole movie. I mean, keeping the whole thing up. You, you can't beat it. It was uh, it was great. It's definitely, for someone who hasn't watched it, it's definitely worth a watch. Um, again, Maximo, thank you so much for having us do this. Uh, and we'll keep listening. The date scene with the dad being there is absolutely hilarious. I do agree. As, as much as I was ranking my funniest parts, like that entire scene's great. And Paulie being a nut and just constantly thinking that he was dead and the reoccurring theme of it. It's really good. It's really, yeah. really good. There isn't a lot in Weekend at Bernie's that you could say isn't like enjoyable. No, like someone would be upset that they like it, but they're still going to like it. This is a, I mean, it's a guilty sin, right? Yeah. Guilty pleasure. Yeah. Guilty sin. Jesus. <laughs> you all right there? I'm okay. I'm all right. It's a guilty pleasure movie, but it's probably the best put together would you say this is the best put together guilty pleasure movie i need to think about it but i want to say yes you th- right well of course you why am i asking you <laughs> max uh that concludes this week's episode thank you again to carlos and natasha for being rock stars and visiting us and they bought sh- swag off our website and huge fans and we always love meeting our fans as long as they're not trying to cut our skin off and wear it as a human suit and max i think at this point reminders are needed patreon.com slash buzz in the tower to become a patreon like carlos and natasha also you can follow us on on any social media platform at Buzz in the Tower. If you have not subscribed yet to our podcast, please do so on whatever platform you listen. Leave a review. Some like it hot. <laughs> Max, I expect something good from you. This is your weekend at Bernie's episode. How do you want to end the episode this week? Usually I get yelled at for just lying there. You already said that once in the episode. Oh, man. Uh, Come on. Uh, yeah, I believe I blew it. You blew it. You got nothing. I begged you to put something together. This is your episode. This is Weekend at Bernie's, and you got nothing. Um, My aunt is very sick. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. I, think I don't we, even have an aunt. That's good. It's perfect. And you know how I'm going to end it. Some like it hot? You're damn right. <laughs> Some like it hot. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.